Life is a struggle for Palestinian vendors in the old city of East Jerusalem. The Gaza war broke out at the start of the key travel season, scaring off tourists and pilgrims completely. They won't be back for a long time. Food guide and chef Izzeldin Bukhari only has me to show around. Uh, I have a bit of work, but it cannot be more than 10% of what I used to. More locals are out and about today. There are no signs of the deadly military raids and unrest that have surged here and throughout the Israeli-occupied West Bank. Assalamu alaikum. The few little jobs that Isildin can find are now less profitable and more challenging in his line of work. Is it difficult at the moment to um, get your hands on the, the produce you need because of the war? Uh, yeah, there is a shortage uh, of uh, vegetables, uh, grains, uh, the prices are going up. He says the state aid only goes so far. Tourism was a key employer here, along with agriculture and construction, for which more than 150,000 Palestinians from the West Bank entered Israel daily. Most of them have been banned since the Hamas terror attacks. Okay. Unemployment has soared, strangling the West Bank economy, sparking further turmoil and creating a supply shock for the Israeli economy. Many building projects have come to a standstill. Israel has been looking at flying in tens of thousands of replacement workers from mainly Asian nations. There's been a rush to sign up in poorer places, like parts of India, despite the dangers of coming to a country at war. It's also sparked a domestic debate about the morals of taking Palestinian jobs. Arafat Sharabati has been out of work since the October 7th attack. The Palestinian taxi driver and father of three says he doesn't want to have to be a burden on his family. The situation is so difficult, my children are helping me with the costs of living. I have children who are married and working and supporting me at the same time. He used to drive the 45 minutes between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem several times a day, or to cities in the West Bank, but says the heightened security there has made what used to be a one-hour return trip unbearable. So if I want to drive to the West Bank and back, given the circumstances, the checkpoints and the constant blockades, it's likely to take an entire day for just one trip to Ramallah. So in the current situation, it's not at all profitable. And as we discover, Arafat can't get into certain parts of East Jerusalem at all. That shuts off another potential source of income. This street has been closed on a daily basis. You used to be able to continue on from here, but the old city is permanently closed. The area around Al-Aqsa Mosque is closed. They keep everyone from entering. The situation is extremely difficult. It's not easy. The Israeli government has been talking about extending entry restrictions to the area around the sacred mosque across the holy month of Ramadan. That's causing even more tensions. Palestinian figures accuse the ultra-religious far-right coalition of provoking Muslims and prolonging the war. But can Israel afford an even longer and even more expensive military campaign? The state is borrowing heavily. It's on track to run one of its widest budget deficits this century. The ratings agency Moody's has lowered Israel's creditworthiness for the first time. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the rating will go back up as soon as we win the war, and we will win. The mood among the Israeli public isn't as optimistic, especially among the families of hostages who've been held captive in Gaza for close to 140 days, and the relatives of fallen soldiers of past conflicts and this one. Never ever so many people have died in Israel in one war, and this is one government that is in charge for this. And they're not taking any responsibility for what happened. And it's unbelievable. As the frustration grows, so too the crowds at weekly political protests on Habima Square in Tel Aviv. But opinions are divided. I 
I'm sure that none of the people around here are aware or even care about what, what actually happens in Gaza. And I wish for sanctions uh, uh, for Israel. Would, would sanctions be the only way to actually get this war to stop? I think so, yeah. When people, when the Israelis will start to feel distressed, that might uh, change their uh, um, opinions or at least their behavior. Why do you want to hurt the people here? It's not hard enough. We, we, have, we have it good here. We don't have it good here. Hurt, hurt the government. Don't hurt the people. Why would you do that? The fact that, you, that we actually blame Netanyahu for all this is an absurd because Israelis do not want to look at themselves. They, they love the fact that they can actually blame Netanyahu for everything. You know, it's, it's beautiful. They chant, shame on you, as the protest begins to wind up. Some head down the road to an even bigger rally at Hostage Square in support of captives' families. We head to Kaplan Street outside military headquarters, where a much louder anti-government protest has been growing every Saturday. From a handful of people to a 1,000-strong crowd, the battle lines are drawn between the demonstrators and police. Emotions are running high. Police are now moving in, some of them on horseback, to subdue the protest as things are reaching tipping point here in Tel Aviv. They're taking away one protester after the next. Several arrests are made again tonight. Some people are fined for blocking roads or disturbing the peace. This was a nation in shock just four months ago. They were dealing with the trauma of October 7. They were dealing with a war against Hamas. Now their fury is pointed directly at the Israeli government. Netanyahu has criticized many of the protests as useless and contributing to the demands of Hamas. These guys want the prime minister to resign. With all the polls, 80% of Israelis do not have faith in Netanyahu. We need to bring our hostages back. We need to end this conflict. And we need to protect our people, our country, our economy with elections. For many, many, many years, Israel has been shown to be a very strong startup nation. Everyone is looking for Israel, for our tech talent, and this has not changed. However, however, it is very clear to us that this ongoing, this ongoing um, situation of war cannot, cannot persist. And at the end of the day, one of the things that alarm me is that my prime minister is not incentivized to end this. Some investors are pulling out of Israel. Credit ratings agency Moody's is worried about the political and fiscal risks, forecasting a negative economic outlook. I think tensions, you know, every workplace has... In Beit Shemesh in central Israel, Danny Shapiro says the deadliest attack on Jews since the Holocaust saw him close the family business initially. Beer consumption went down really fast because, you know, those are one of the first things that, are, that get hit. So our production went down, I'd say over 80 percent. Instead of laying off staff, he found work for them on farms in the south near Gaza, otherwise manned by foreign laborers who'd fled. We helped them uh, pick mangoes and uh, pineapples and uh, patayas. We donated uh, work, our working hands, uh, when we were done. So we, uh, we bought part of that and we actually made a beer from it. The amount of, of positive responses to any initiative was really uh, overwhelming and people like, they, they want to help. So mm -hmm. they, uh, so, so people were buying the beer even before the beer was ready. Consumer confidence has returned. Israelis are leaving their homes again. They're shopping, returning to bars and restaurants. The economy could grow this year and rebound next year if the conflict is contained to Gaza. I can't bear life right now witnessing what's happening on the news every day, what's happening in Gaza. 
The situation is critical, and it makes one psychologically uncomfortable. What I long for most is an end to this war for the poor people of Gaza. They've witnessed horrific and unimaginable scenes. Finding works taken a back seat for Izzeldin as he tries to get the family he has in Gaza out. We were able uh, for my sister to get her out about two months ago from Gaza, so she's now with us in Jerusalem, but uh, we're trying to get uh, the rest uh, of uh, family members and her husband, uh, and that's a definitely a challenge. Uh, How many relatives have you lost so far? Uh, we lost uh, more than uh, seven uh, relatives, uh, my aunt and her kids uh, and her children, uh, her grandchildren, uh, which is basically was a 31 member in one uh, airstrike of her family and the family of her husband. Isildin is critical of the Israeli government, but still has reason for hope. We can see uh, that what is happening here uh, in this country uh, and the policies is not pushing to anywhere, mm. but I feel the push of the international community will make uh, pressure for some things to happen. Really good seeing you again. Good to see you again. Yeah. 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 Take care. But if the war drags on, economists warn of huge damage to both the Palestinian and Israeli economies.